Okay, so I have a compass out here and we're in the field and I've got to target that direction, okay? And that it's about 700 yards, you know, that way. So we're just gonna have a quick reference so that you understand what I'm talking about in future videos. This needle, the red part points to the magnetic north, right? And some of you, that's old news and some of you it isn't. If I say your target is at 115 degrees, sometimes people might say 115 degrees east, but, but that's redundant because 115 degrees is that way. And it's exactly 115 degrees. So if somebody had a compass, they could say, oh, great, contact, right? And that's reference to magnetic north. Well, the idea here is that uh, in order to use this, wherever you are, you line up the needle and you have to look down at it from above or it tips and it gets stuck in there and it gets hung up on things. In order to use this accurately, you have to look at it from above. The reason I like the mirrored compass is that at an angle, I can hold it up and use it like iron sights to look through here. And I could still see straight down on it from the reflection of the mirror and I could see what's going on. So now I can point it at a target, you know, like a pistol or a rifle with iron sights and I can see down from above. And then, um, I'm, I know I'm holding it at an angle, but I'll dial this so that the needle in this housing line up and it's, it's hard to do without uh, but I'll dial it so the housing lines up on that needle and then if I'm looking at my target and it's perfectly aligned if I might have to move it to this and I might have to move it to here but whatever we're talking about if it's lined up through these iron sights and simultaneously this is in the housing then that number could be taken off and it can tell you the precise measurement, you know, probably down to a degree if you're really good with this. But one degree is pretty good with a compass and that should help you uh, to get around. And, and as we measured this and we held it up, we got it down to 115 degrees from north. And sometimes that's information that you want to know. If you don't have a map, you can still say, I'm gonna walk that way. And instead of saying, I'm gonna walk that way, you say, I'm gonna walk at, you know, whatever, you pick a reference point. Let's say that windmill that's way out there. And I say, I'm gonna walk at 270 degrees. And if I walk straight there and I count my pace, then I could say, I went 400 meters on this azimuth, right? Or on this bearing or on this heading or whatever language you're gonna use. I went on this specific line for this specific distance. So in order to get back, you can just flip that around 180 and I know how to get back to where I came from. And that's how you would make a map if you were just writing down, I went this way for this far, this way for this far. And if I want to go back to my start point, you just make a triangle and it's very basic trigonometry to get you back here to where you came from. So you can do a lot with just a compass and no need for a map. Of course, if you add a map to it, now you've got like a power factor built into there, but I think it's a good thing to have and it's a good reference because I can point straight into the wind and I can point at my target now and I can use my compass to say the wind is coming in at, you know, at, at precisely 24 degrees and then you can put that 24 degrees into your kestrel and instead of saying you know it's coming at, at you know 10 30 you can, you can fine tune the angle of the wind even more precisely in your kestrel it can use the the hour to the 30 minute factor but in that sweet spot there's a lot of variation in 30 minutes and if you change the kestrel setting to angles now you've got one degree increments that can fine tune your wind call and you can do that with a compass uh, very quickly and efficiently. And these are only a couple bucks.